This is KGW News at Sunrise. Good morning and thank you for waking up with us on this Saturday. I'm Galen Etlin. This morning crews continue to go through debris in Nashville. A Christmas morning explosion rocked the downtown there. What investigators are now saying. Plus, some much needed relief for restaurants struggling under coronavirus restrictions. How newly legalized to-go cocktails could boost their sales. But first, our Chris McGinnis is live at home with your forecast. Good morning, Chris. Good morning, Galen. Uh, a wet day yesterday, and we're still up to kind of a wet start this morning. As I check out the uh, radar here behind me over the last three hours, bands of showers continue passing on through the Pacific Northwest. And just tuning in this morning, you folks out in the Columbia River Gorge, I want to let you know this. The winter weather advisory in effect for the Central Gorge. This includes Hood River, White Salmon, Carson area, and the Upper Hood River Valley. That has been extended until noon today. The cold air, just uh, a little extra stubborn there. So it's been slow to see the transition, that expected transition from snow to freezing rain to, to plain rain. In fact, we are still below the freezing mark in the Hood River area, and the Dow is pretty close to it as we give you a live look from Oregon's Veterans Home in the Dalles. The uh, East Gorge and a lot of the Central Columbia River Gorge saw a white Christmas. We still have snow on the ground there. A picture from Washdot. This is from uh, the White Salmon side of the Hood River Bridge at SR14. And you can plainly see, even in the darkness, uh, that there is some snow coverage out there. So anybody traveling through the Central Columbia River Gorge, be prepared uh, for some slick roadways, a little higher in elevation. This is Highway 35 up in the Parkdale area. This ODOT camera, again, showing some snow-covered roadways there. That's up at about 1,700 feet. All right, right now, PDX, it's 39 degrees. It's dark. we got a little ways to go before we see the sunrise this morning. Uh, I don't think we'll see a whole lot of sun, but in the day planner today, I don't think we're going to see a whole lot of rain either. Galen, yesterday, we got pretty close to a half an inch of rain here in Portland. There are going to be some showers sprinkled here and there throughout the day, but not nearly as wet as yesterday afternoon. We'll top out in the upper 40s, and tomorrow looks like a pretty good day to get outside. More on that coming up in just a few minutes. All right, Chris, we'll see you in a bit. Thank you so much. We begin with an update on the Christmas morning explosion in downtown Nashville. Federal investigators are calling it an intentional act. Three people are recovering this morning, and investigators are examining what could be human remains found in the debris. Wow, look at that video there. Minutes before the blast, a recording from a parked RV told people to evacuate the area. Then that vehicle exploded. People could feel it from blocks away. My windows completely caved in to my apartment complex and uh, it woke me up immediately. And uh, next thing you know, all we're hearing is screams and, and, and the sirens going off. Now, the explosion knocked out phone and Internet service for part of the city, and the Nashville airport had to shut down for a while because of communications problems. Both President Trump and President-elect Joe Biden have been briefed on this investigation. Back locally, police are investigating two different holiday shootings, one of them deadly. The first was Thursday night around 11 o'clock. Officers responded to a hotel parking lot on Northeast Sandy and found 11 9 millimeter shell casings. Surveillance video showed a man shooting towards a car. Just after midnight, police say a man walked into a hospital with gunshot wounds to his torso. The car in the parking lot matched the video. Now, he didn't want to talk to police and officers did not make arrests. The second shooting that we're talking about was just before 9 yesterday morning. Two people were shot at an apartment complex in Northeast Holiday Street. One was taken to the hospital. The other died at the scene. The Oregon State Medical Examiner is investigating. Now this year, for context, Portland has seen more than 850 reported shootings. That's double what we saw in 2019. A Portland police officer is in the hospital after being hit by a pickup truck. Just before 9 Thursday night, officers were called to a 76 gas station on Southeast Powell for reports of a stolen Chevy. And when they arrived, they saw the truck with two people inside. They say the driver rammed a patrol car and hit an officer. That same officer then fired his gun. Police say the truck drove off and was found abandoned an hour later near Southeast 54th and Belmont. Officers responded into that area with a canine and conducted a search of the immediate area and did not find anybody. It's unknown the, whether anyone in that vehicle sustained any injuries uh, because we never found anyone. Police did not release any suspect information there, and so they're asking anyone who may have seen what happened or know anything about this to call Portland Police. 
Crews are working through the holiday weekend to restore gas service to homes in Hood River and Odell. Thousands have not had gas service since Sunday night when a driver crashed into a regulator. About 1,500 customers in White Salmon and Bingen already had service restored. Let's turn now to the pandemic here. Oregon reported 908 new coronavirus cases and seven more deaths on Christmas Day. That's the third time in recent weeks the daily case total is below 1,000. Governor Kate Brown credited Oregonians with scaling back their holiday plans and helping avoid a surge. Meanwhile, hospitalizations have been going down a little bit too. Yesterday, there were 472 people in Oregon hospitals with COVID. That's down 23 from Thursday. 103 of them are in ICU beds, two more than Thursday. Restaurants and bars could be getting some help here. During the special session on Monday, Oregon lawmakers approved cocktails to go. Now, it was previously illegal under state law. The catch is here, you do have to buy food along with the drinks. Some businesses have started serving up takeout concoctions. John Petit, the owner of Shine Distillery and Grill in North Portland, says it's a lifeline for the struggling industry. It's going to be very helpful because we're going to be able to take a, a meal ticket where it's got two or three people in a vehicle with, you know, two or three hamburgers and an entree. That's a $36 ticket, to a $40 ticket. This will be able to drive it up to possibly $60 to an $80 ticket. That's a, that's a huge increase. And not only is it a huge increase, but it's on the revenue where we make the most, uh, where we get to keep the most of the dollars. Now, Shine Distillery has been pretty creative since the start of the pandemic. When it first had to shut down in March, it started making hand sanitizer. Then in November, it started a drive through dinner and show combo featuring drag queens. So we've taken you there a few times and it helps cocktails to go will help business even more. Local Native American tribes are on the priority list, list rather for the COVID-19 vaccines and hundreds of tribal members are already vaccinated with help from an unexpected connection that made vaccine storage possible in Eastern Oregon. Was it painful? No, I couldn't even feel it. U.S. Marine Corps veteran Chaz Webb was one of the first to get the COVID-19 vaccine at the Yellowhawk Tribal Health Center in Pendleton. The center faces unique challenges in the pandemic. We're trying to break down those barriers of distrust. CEO Lisa Guzman is Nez Perce Indian and has experienced challenges on Native American reservations firsthand. Lack of resources while trying to preserve our culture, language, our ways. It's a whole nother layer for us. She helps serve about 3,500 members of the Confederated Tribes of the Umatilla Indian Reservation. Hi, Grandma, can I come inside? No, honey, better not. Don't want to get you sick. And then we don't want to be sick. Videos like this over the last few months have encouraged members to distance and protect each other during the pandemic. Guzman says a history of distrust in government systems means many don't have ample health care and therefore are more likely to have underlying conditions. Access is a problem, too. We have a lot of difficulty just recruiting uh, medical providers. So the vaccine's arrival to the reservation could mean lives saved. And we just received another shipment. Last weekend, about 300 members were vaccinated. Healthcare workers and vulnerable tribal elders were first in line. They'll get the second dose of Pfizer's vaccine in early January. And this unexpected gift made storing the vaccine at ultra cold temperatures possible. We received our freezer from the Department of Natural Resources. It's a lamprey research freezer. Came in handy, it sounds like. Yeah. The Yellowhawk Tribal Health Center is getting vaccines from the federal government's Indian Health Services. Guzman says shipments are being divided among more than 40 regional tribes. Being creative with what we have, but continue to advocate for more. So how do you feel? So that more people like Chaz Webb can carry on tribal tradition and health. All right, let's move now to a positive update here. The Oregon Zoo reopens today. It's offering some limited attendance each week, Fridays through Sundays. The zoo has been closed to daytime visitors for the past month. Now, this time you're going to need your tickets in advance to reserve a time to visit. Masks are also required for everyone older than five. Still to come, a Springfield boy's parents weren't sure he'd make it to Christmas, but thanks to support from across the globe, they have some hope this holiday. That's next.